with a statement of the night. And that was Jalen Brunson and the Knicks visiting the Boston Celtics. And it was a Brunson kind of night. Second quarter, Knicks up one. Brunson in a groove early. Mid-range shot, Alan Hahn. We call that a Brunson burner in New York. Do we? Yes, we do. And he had six threes in this game. Got into a good rhythm against a really good defensive team. They played all their guys in Boston, but did they play as hard as they normally would? Brunson at 18 in the first half. Knicks led by 21. Ten minutes left now in the third. Knicks up by 20. Brunson still hot from deep, Monica. One point shy of scoring 40. That would have given him three consecutive 40-point performances. Midway through the third, Knicks up 21. Dante DiVincenzo, the outlet pass to Brunson, who makes the three. Brunson was red hot all night. He finished with 39 points. Knicks went on to win 118 to 109. And with that win, the Knicks stay alive in the chase for the second seed in the Eastern Conference. ESPN Analytics says they actually have a 31% chance to get that two seed. But of course, that means um, they have a 69% chance to get the third. Uh, so that seems more likely at this point. But obviously, a big statement victory going up to Boston uh, and knocking off the Celtics. No matter, and, and the Celtics played their guys, right? Like they were. Sure did. Three quarters. Yeah, Monica was there. Did they did? But how hard did those starters play? So I actually don't think that game was supposed to go that way. I thought they were the Celtics were legit playing through that first half. They just struggled to knock down shots. And then the third quarter, I'll give you maybe they taking their foot off the gas. So, so coming out of that, Boston sitting there, what, 13 games in front of everybody in the, in the Eastern Conference, obviously going to be the one seed they've had that locked up. But, like, what kind of trust do we have in them at this point to, to actually do it? Well, here, the, the only team that can beat the Celtics in the East, in my opinion, are the Celtics. Right. Because they have been their own worst enemy last year. That really was the reason why they didn't get to the NBA Finals. Play with their food throughout the playoffs last year. The series with Atlanta should have never gone six. The series with the Sixers, an absolute abomination for both teams. And then that conference final, you think about how they went down 0-2 at home, went to Miami, and they got blown out in game three. How are you not ready for that game? They end up losing it in seven, so they don't get to the NBA finals. And then this year when you watch them, they have been magnificent. They have been an unstoppable force. But there are times in games we've seen this season where they have blown big leads, mm -hmm. where they have not had good finishes. And then here's your other question. When you look at the coaching in the East, you ask yourself, when do they have the matchup where you say, I'll take Joe Missoula over the opponent's coach? And in the playoffs, that stuff matters, Mon. Yeah, and that's, that is a tough question to ask. I think this year is a little bit different. They're a year older. They're wiser. The addition of Kristaps Porzingis to me makes a huge difference in terms of the way that teams can guard them with the physicality. He obviously stretches those fours and fives with his ability to knock down the three and handle the ball. But I also think the emergence of Derek White to me is a little bit different than what we've seen in the past. In that run to the finals, you know, he was traded mid-season. I think he is solidified in who he is and in his role. And of course, Drew Holiday gives them that championship pedigree. So I, I think that there's not a ton to take away from that game if you're the Boston Celtics. The, the feeling in the arena is that they've been playing yeah. basically meaningless basketball for right. a month, yeah. and so they were due for one of these This game games. meant more to the Knicks than it for did sure. to the Celtics. So I want to ask you about the Knicks. Like they, Now you're talking about them as the two or three seed in the East. Like what, what is their ceiling? What can they accomplish? How deep on a, a playoff run can Jalen Brunson lead the Knicks? Listen, man, you got to play the ball games. To me, this is a team that still has the ability to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. And yes, it looks different than what you thought it might, but Jalen Brunson has been tremendous. I mentioned over the highlight, he was on the brink of three consecutive 30-point games. I believe it's five, if not more, in the 30-point category, and 40-point was the first number, excuse me. He just continues to find a way, and this team has truly adopted that mindset mm. sincerely. From head coach Tom Thibodeau on down, they're going to find a way. And the other night, we're talking to OG Ananobi after the game. He's very matter-of-fact in terms of how he can add value. They are simple things, but they have a profound impact. The biggest concern for the Knicks is how much they rely on Brunson. Without very Julius Randle, right. secondary scorer, all the great teams that have championship aspirations, they all have another star to lean on, right? Mm -hmm. The Knicks don't have that. They have Jalen Brunson, and the numbers to tell you all you need to know. 35 points a game over the last 15 games, they've won 10 of them. But the plus-minus stuff is the thing that really throws you off because it's plus 187 when he's on the court, mm -hmm. minus 72 when he's not. They've got to figure out how to survive the minutes without Jalen Brunson in playoff games. Otherwise, they're going to have to play him 48 minutes, which you <laughs> certainly can't. Look at the standings in the Western Conference. Denver Nuggets defending champs in the driver's seat. Kings and the Lakers and the Warriors are all locked into the play-in. Suns trying desperately to come out of that 
number seven spot. So a lot going on in the West, and we have our NBA crew back to play a game of fact or fiction, Western Conference team fact or fiction. Uh, Alan Hahn, the Suns need to win the West uh, for this to be considered a successful season for them. Is that fact, it's a fact or fiction? It's a fact now because wow. they're a play-in team right now. Like, look at what they've done since the All-Star break, 14 and 11. They're a mediocre team. You've got three stars. This experiment right now doesn't look like it's working, and Frank Vogel could lose his job if they don't get out of the first round. So, successful season? Yeah, the only way to save it now is to make a run and get to the conference finals. Question is, can they? Can they, Monica? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I am a KD fan and believer. Uh, this is heavily matchup dependent for me. I just think that their big three, they're a little late in terms of focusing on offensive prowess, right? Like, as we look at big threes, the third guy is that Swiss Army knife that can defend, that's really versatile. And I just don't know about their depth in addition to it being centered on those three pieces. And how about also, I mean, I love Devin Booker, but you can't tell me you're chilling when people ask you the level of frustration right now. You can't be chilling. Like, you got it. It's a pedal to the that. metal time. Like, you can't you can no, no, tell no. them you're chilling. Okay, Absolutely I not. <laughs> yeah, I disagree. No, you, no, well, it looks like it because yeah. you're down 35 to 2 in the start of a game against a Clipper team that's played nobody in yeah. that game. You got to start raising the level of expectations for yourselves on this team because next year, those three guys are going to cost $150 million. Mm. How do you keep that team together and it's not worth the while? So they've got a lot to prove right now. So you can't be chilling. You need to go pedal to the metal and start really earning what a lot of people were giving you praise the start of the season as one of the possible contenders in the West right now, pretender. Tonight's game against the Kings, that's your 7-8 play-in game. That's your 7-8 wow. play-in game. That's a big for game. A team with three stars. I want to go to Dallas now. Are they, I want to talk about the Mavericks because they have their foot on the pedal, right? Yes. Are they the biggest threat, Monica, to Denver in the Western Conference? Faction. Uh, I think it's a fact. That faction I also, faction I have a is not of, one of the choices. A hint of fiction on it. Listen, a, Dallas from the is book playing, of Monica. <laughs> Dallas is playing excellent basketball. Uh, Daniel Gafford, PJ Washington, they have transformed the way this team is able to defend. Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, they need no introduction in terms of what they're capable of. Somewhere in my mind, I know it's a big if, the Clippers are still out there, and I, I think when they are healthy, They've been able to play with force on both sides of the ball that I don't think has been matches in the upper echelon of the league this year. But currently, right now, yes, they've got the size. You've got Luka Doncic versus Nikola Jokic. They both control the pace and the tempo of the game. They are elite distributors, and they both want to get a bucket when they need to get it done. That would be a lot of fun. I'd love to see that as a conference final. That would be a lot that of fun. Yeah, because you also got closers, right? Yep. You got Kyrie's a closer. Nobody's Luka's a closer. Moment, for sure. That absolutely would be a fun, fun series. Yeah. Interesting. Still, I can't get over faction. I, I think, it, I think it's, like it's, it's mostly fact, but there's like a little clause where it might be fiction. There's a dictionary, the, the American dictionary, then there's the Monica yeah. McNutt dictionary. There's a get up morning different. television, it's, it's, three it's hours updated. of sleep dictionary. Yep. Fact yep. or fiction is not a segment that lends itself to gray area. Yeah, unless, yeah, we need an answer. Hey, fact hey, or fiction. hey, hey. I'm just Usually saying. I'm with the gray area. It's my Monica, world. Right? Like, fact is me. Thing. <laughs> the Golden State Warriors are the most dangerous team in the play in fact or fiction. Well, that's fiction. I don't need to make up a word. I mean, they're most dangerous. <laughs> like, come on now. Like, like, look, this is not to be disrespectful to what has been a great dynasty. I've mentioned this before, though. Name me the last dynasty that's had a, a three, three eras. You know, they have not. They won their championship a couple of years ago. They were able to get one more ring out of this group. But there's other teams that you have to look at in the play-in right now. The Suns may be even being one of them if they, if they wake up. The Philadelphia 76ers, to me, are that team that is the most dangerous team in the play-in because of that guy they just showed you there, Joel Embiid, the six straight wins that they have had. He and Tyrese Maxey have been fantastic, and you do not want a playoff series with Nick Nurse as the coach on the other side. Yeah, and I, again, I continue to go to, like, slightly bigger picture, right? Joel Embiid's road to get to this moment. I would argue that there's a different level of scar tissue. There's a different level of resilience. Having been close, having come up short, having to have navigate this injury, having already clocked his MVP, his personal life, he's growing as a husband, as a father, all those good things. Like, I just think there's probably a different level of focus for him as Philadelphia attempts to upset the apple cart. And for them, I, there's not reason for them to be worried about matching up with either the two, maybe the one, but the two well, that's my or the one question. in the East, right? Like. If anybody's going to push Boston, you have to mention the Sixers in that conversation in addition to the I'm Knicks. sorry, did they not almost be? They, they, they had saying. them on the ropes last yeah. year, that same exact team. Yeah. So I actually think they shouldn't have any fear of the Celtics. And as the Sixers have have to, we use pedal to the metal again, 
The Sixers have been that right now. The Celtics have kind of geared down, right? Because they've already had everything clinched. Yeah. So can they ramp it back up? And you got a first round series. Like, think about it for Boston. If it's Philly, Philly's ready for you. If it's Miami, yeah, you're coming out of that series battered and bruised. Right. So the, six, the, the Celtics really got to turn it back up and get themselves ready because that first round is not going to be a cakewalk. Ironically, I kind of feel like, given last year's history, mm -hmm. the Celtics would probably ramp up the quickest and the hardest to run it back versus the Heat. Yeah, I understand. Right? Yep, yep. Just a, for a revenge factor? Yeah, scar, man. scar tissue yeah. still yeah, there. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, scar tissue is still there. So that, that sounds to me like it makes the 76ers even more kind of sneaky and dangerous for them. Than, I mean, they'd be up for you the heat. Make that argument for yeah. Again, if you're Phil and you get that seventh seed and you're playing the Bucks, the wounded animal in the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, who's, who should really be the favorite in that series if Giannis if is not If Giannis open? is unavailable, that game is completely Imagine a changed. seventh seed as the favorite in that kind of a Oof, series. Man. Oof. Yeah, the uh, Embiid return has obviously really made this fascinating, this early part uh, of the NBA playoffs.